Hey, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. I'm that guy who uh, talks about guitars and stuff and uh, hats. Basically hats. That long-haired dude with the hats who uh, knows his stuff and always has like a guitar with him now. I never used to have the guitar years ago, but uh, about a year ago I started combining uh, my love of music with my love of hats. Um, it, it helps to keep me motivated also. You know, because sometimes saying the same sales lines and the same rhetoric over and over for two and a half decades can, you know, you, you kind of get on autopilot. You know exactly which response to say for this question because you've heard each one dozens of times. So, you know, you lose a little bit of the spontaneity, spontaneity and the, uh, you know, the, the zest. So, um, guitar stuff helps keep everything fresh for me, I think, too. And also, um, I find people that have a love of guitars and hats, and uh, it's a specific niche. So they come here and they're like, hey, I like both, dude. I'm a musician and I wear hats and stuff. So anyway, we're going to talk about a few things today. One thing I want to talk about, I touched on it last uh, episode, is um, thank yous. Um, I want to say thank you, uh, first of all, to Wes. Uh, Wes is uh, another very, very uh, supportive viewer who's uh, always uh, watched every single uh, episode, made really cool comments on my guitar playing, and he's a player himself, and he sent me a couple of videos, a couple of them that were like, you know, okay, and a couple that were like, really, really good. And um, I enjoy uh, talking, you know, with him in the comment section, it's kind of, it's kind of cool, you know. Um, he is uh, also a painter, and he makes these really cool, like, beachy uh, Jimmy Buffett scenes, you know, like, you know, that kind of cool hangout, you know, like, uh, party vibe. And um, he's going to make me something back here that says Kevin from JJ Hat Center. So, you know, make it look iconic. So every time you, uh, you know, you turn me on, you'll see the hat and the guitar on one side, and then maybe you'll see uh, Kevin from JJ Hat Center on the other side. I don't know, I also like artwork, so I thought it would be a cool idea to, to make this uh, kind of a barn looking thing here and just hang some artwork up. You know, I'm going to hang up, um, I've got my two paintings down here. Uh, this is one, Jerry Garcia and Annabelle Garcia. I did this one, the uh, watercolor. So that one, I'm, I want to hang it. It's got a nice frame and matting to it, nice natural color. Uh, I want to hang, that's Jerry's uh, lithograph, it's one of the original ones uh, from his opening, the first 156 out of 100, it's his cat, Jerry's signature in there. Uh, I've got another painting down here that's kind of very hard to see, but it's, uh, you can see it down there, see that? It's like a family, it's another watercolor that I did uh, a long time ago. 84, I think I did that one. And then 94, I did that Jerry Garcia one. 10 years apart. 94. Uh, 94 is the top one, 84 is the bottom one. It's kind of cool, right? Alright. So, essentially, I want to make that kind of like a little museum y thing, and that's going to be the centerpiece that, you know, Wes is painting with Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Cool. Jimmy Buffett beach scene thing, and uh, he says it's going to be really cool, you know, hopefully it'll be something like, with something green in it, that'd be cool, or green and purple, that might be even better, so let's see, uh, I'm going to take a screenshot of this Wes, take a screenshot so you could get my guitar right, ready, click, here's the headstock, <laughs> here's the guitar, like cool they use clay clay dots instead of using like fake mother of pearl i love the clay dots isn't that cool like a pre-cvs vendor you gotta love reverend they're just an amazing company they use a special spring in their bixby which is like a light spring it gives it like a little bit more of a flex they're just a wonderful company guitar company reverend uh, I uh, sort of made a new friend online, uh, Mr. Ken Haas, who owns the company with his wife, and he's been very helpful um, in uh, helping me choose the right models and all my technical issues. 
helping me hunt down uh, the right guitars and stuff. Thank you, Ken. I also want to th thank uh, Daisy, who is uh, another very cool uh, viewer and a friend. Um, thank you for the uh, ukulele for my son. That was a very sweet gesture. And uh, all the amazing things uh, you sent me. I'm uh, reading a very nice book from you. And uh, it's mostly your conversation that uh, is most valuable to me. I want to thank uh, Tommy for sending me six pints of Grater's ice cream, which you can only get in Cincinnati. Um, I'm not saying this because I want you to start sending me things. That's that's totally the opposite of what I want, but I just wanted to say just thanks. This is not like uh, your mom telling you to write a, you know, a, uh, a thank you card to Aunt, uh, Aunt Harriet because, you know, you got to write a thank you card when you get your birthday gift. It's not that. This is like the real deal, sincere, you know, like, thank you. you know, it's nice. It's nice coming home and getting a surprise, like, yeah, you're having a rough day, just like kind of banging heads with your, you know, your son trying to get home locked down, and, and then all of a sudden you find out, hey, Kev, uh, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? I'm at Grater's. I want to get you six pints. What? Um, I could barely afford that. You know, I did that one time because I had a, um, I had a gift card for Gold Belly, so and they dealt with Grater's ice cream, six pints, so that's their minimum. And one of their pints is like three times the price of haagen -Dazs. so I couldn't really afford a half dozen pints from them, but yeah, they make the best ice cream. They use little bricks of Belgium, of Belgium chocolate, and then they break them up with these huge like broomstick things, these dowels, so every once in a while you get like these quarter-sized pieces of Belgium chocolate, like dark chocolate, or even every once in a while, like every couple of pints, you might see like a golf ball size. It's crazy. Um, and it's like Oregon, uh, uh, blueberry, uh, blackberries, raspberries, black raspberries, yeah. I think they also make a black cherry version. They have a mint chocolate chip version with the same chocolate in it. It's crazy. And it has something like 10 or 15% more fat content than regular ice cream. They're made in some kind of French presses or something. Stuff is sick. It's, I mean, it, it's so good. The combination of this ice cream, this like organic black raspberry ice cream with this amazing Belgium chocolate chunk. That's like the combination of both of those things are just so good. It's almost like a chocolate souffle with like raspberry sauce. It's perfect. Um, so thank you, Tommy. That was, it brightened up my day. And, and my son has been engorging himself on like, the first day he ate an entire pint. This stuff is so heavy, it's like you eat like, a, you know, you might eat a half pint of haagen dazs in one sitting or like a whole pint. This you gotta eat like maybe a quarter because it feels the same. It's so, so much cream content, you know? My son, yeah, he ate a full pint and I think he almost did that the second night too, so he thanks you also. Uh, thank you, Scott Raymond, for the music stand uh, that uh, I use. Right now, uh, I'm filming you from this music stand and for the great acoustic guitar you gave me. And thank you guys for the donations of the two new hats. Um, if we're going to do giveaways, it's only going to be for new things. So uh, thank you for the new hats. That was wonderful. The last video I kind of ran out of memory uh, gave me a warning that it was going to stop. So I wanted to get more into how you tighten hats and stuff. Um, but I didn't really get that into it. Um, but um, yeah, hopefully we can take our time a little bit more today. Okay, one thing I want to talk to you guys about is a little project that you can do with your Western hat. This is something I did with my rancher years and years ago, and it used to be my favorite hat. Uh, it was my all-time favorite hat. I actually wore this thing to the ground. You know, it got all grimy, and we had to sand like, the grime out of it, and you know, it started getting thin and everything. Like, it was just so, so old, this hat, and um, I wore the heck out of it. So the idea is, okay, you take your Western hat, you pop the crown out, okay? You stuff it, stuff it as tightly as you can, okay, and you steam it. You steam it stuff. So in other words, you get wads of paper, you start getting flat wads, and you start stacking them up, you know, 
or just balls of paper, and then at the top you go with the, with the flat wads and pancakes on top of the balls. And you get as much in there as you can, punch it down and just stuff it in so it's as compressed and tight with paper as you can. Then you steam it. Okay, this is opening the crown. The next thing you do is you can take your fist and you can kind of, or your fingers like this, and kind of rub out the inside, kind of fanning your fingers and all the parts like in here that need to come up, you're pushing it up with your fingers and you just try to take out the old shape while you steam, steaming the top. Now if you don't have a steam room, uh, the oven doesn't work that good because of the flames and stuff. Um, it's better to use a steam iron. Uh, there are even really cheap steamers you could get like from, you know, portable ones, Norelco, you know, like 20 bucks and stuff. But um, if you don't have a steamer, um, one thing you can do is stuff it. Stuff it as tightly as you can. Uh, put whatever you can in there, you know, bandanas, socks, paper, and then start putting the pancakes and start punching it and get it as tight as you can. And when your hat looks open crown, okay, if you don't have anything to steam it with, um, I, I'm not a big fan of this, but you can spray it, okay? You can spray it with a mist of water. Um, try to hold it this way so you're only getting it on the top of the crown, this area. Okay, a little mist in there and there. So you want to get that entire crown kind of like steamed, okay? And then while it's stuck, let it dry like that, okay? Keep repeating this process. Keep repeating, repeating until you got an open crown. It might take a few times. And then what you want to do is flatten the brim. Same thing. You steam it, steam it, steam it so it's real soft, okay? Then you put a bandana over it or a cloth, any kind of cloth. It doesn't matter, a t-shirt. You don't want to get lines, so a flat cloth is best. Anything flat, not like, you know, folds and wrinkles in it. Put your flat bandana over it and then put some books, okay? Stack some books up. On top of the books, get your heaviest things you can get. You know, whatever you feel is the heaviest. If you've got dumbbells, you know, 50-pound dumbbells, put them on. Um, so in other words, you want to steam the brim, and then when it's really, you know, hot and wet from the steam, you're going to put some weights on it and you're going to flatten it. But if you're going to put weights or books, you have to have cloth first between all those weights. Flatten out your brim. You can make a hat just like mine. Um, I did this a long time ago with a black rancher. It was beautiful. Um, I took the bands. Uh, I think I left the band, but I put another band on top of it. I put a uh, some kind of leopard fur, fun fur, like a pony skin band. But you could put a grain band. You could put uh, horse hair bands. You could buy a really cool concho band from eBay, or no, Amazon. It was an Amazon. Sorry, Amazon has concho western hat bands. If you put in a, a concho hat bands or con western concho hat band, one or the other, it comes in oval and it comes in round. It's a black leather band with like silver, you know, zinc or nickel silver like uh, conchos going around it, kind of like that Stevie Ray Vaughan thing. Dude, it looks amazing. Open up your crown, flatten your brim, and put one of those concho bands on it, or you know, one of these turkey uh, tail feathers or something, and you got a totally new hat. You know? um, sometimes oversized, it's a little cool. If you want it, you could do what I did. I pulled out my entire sweatband. Sometimes I do that, and I put a cap band new in the front, so I have a uh, nice, like, uh, cotton you know, surface. But if your hat's too tight, you know, that's a good way to pull your sweatband out. You can pull it all out and just leave the front of leather. Um, but uh, I prefer doing that rather than stretching your hat. But the, these hats do look good oversized because the crowns are so high. If you wear it high like a regular western, it looks very high. So they look good a little oversized. That's what I think. I'm getting all kinds of texts and stuff. Oh, I got a delivery. Cool. I wonder what it is. So anyway, that's it. Open your crown. Use your hands, fists, steam it open, okay? Stuff it and steam it, or stuff it and spray it. Keep the spray away from, you know, I, I don't like to spray hats, but if you have no steam, you could try misting it, you know, with some water. Um, and then stuff it, you know. Stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, and keep repeating this process. See what happens, you should get uh, an open crown. 
if the water affects the texture of the hat, you know, you're going to just get a hat brush or any clean brush, brush it counterclockwise. It'll just kind of make all the nap look the same so the wet part from the dry part doesn't have different texture. You just brush it out. But yeah, and put weights on the brim. Uh, always a cloth between the weights and books and the hat because they leave lines and dents on the hat. Put some kind of smooth cloth, not folded up, bunched up stuff, you know. And um, another way to do it is ironing it, okay. Ironing it works really good, but if your brim is soft, if it's floppy and soft, you're going to have to stiffen, which means you got to packing tape it, use packing tape, get all the dust off first, the edge, the top and the bottom, and then you got to um, spray it with hairspray. Spray here, hairspray, ultra hold, super hold hairspray, the top. Too. I like doing the underside, but uh, if you do that, you got to cover up your sweatband. I use a big ball of tissue or I use a hat jack to cover the sweatband. You don't want to get hairspray on the uh, sweatband, so you've got to cover that with something. A big head size ball of tissue will generally cover that, or, or the little pancakes, stack them up, you know. Spray it with uh, hairspray, get that stiff. Once it's nice and stiff like that, then you can flatten it. If a hat is not stiff, it's not going to go flat. It's just going to fall. It's gonna, you're going to get one of those hippie hats, those you know floppy things like that. You know. So if you want it this way, flat. Yeah, you know, flattening and weights are going to help. Uh, steaming it before you put the weights on also helps, but none of it will work unless it's stiff enough. So you got to build up layers of stiffener. You spray it, let it dry. It's completely dry. You can put another coat. Always cover up your sweatband. Don't spray the whole hat. Don't go crazy. Just the underside of the brim. Okay. Keep it off the sweatband. They told you. Um, never spray without using the packing tape first. Get all the dust off. Otherwise, you're sealing the dirt under there. Um, and that's it. This is what you wind up with: flat brim, open crown. Um, my crown is actually was not open. I I did a little crease in it. I thought it looked good. A little. So I'm not a really tall guy, so I lowered it. Still looks tall enough, I think. But uh, I could still open it. I could do that same uh, process at home without the steamer, and I can get it open like this, get rid of these creases. Now, something like a rancher is going to have really tough creases. So what I suggest doing is pulling out the silk lining, putting your fist inside the hat, you know, like this, and just going at it, you know, while you're steaming on the other top side. Just you know, punch it out, rub it out as you're steaming it, and then you know, stuff it, let it dry stuffed. So it's all those little creases are pushed out, you know, as many as you can. Get your hat shaped as round and nice as possible. And if you get little curls on here, okay, then you gotta do more weights, and you probably need a little bit more stiffener on the edge, that could happen too. Your hat sometimes does not stiff enough, it'll curl or not thick enough. But you could go the other way. It's going off, you just bend it down in the opposite direction. Generally, you could compensate, make things flat. Something's going off, you bend it down, you get rid of the little curl. That's it, baby. Turn your cowboy hat into a uh, cool, you know, Native American looking. What's his name? Uh, Gary Clark Jr. Kind of trendy Hendrix hat. Yeah, it's like a Hendrix hat almost, right? Turn your turn your Western hat into a Hendrix hat, or make it open ground and flat brim would be the technical term. You could do it flat and bring this forward a little. That's a cool look too. You could flatten it and then bring the sides up, which is kind of like weird and hillbillyish, but uh, I like perfectly flat, like just dead flat. Got to keep it hard. Remember, it's not going to work unless it's stiff. You can buy a hat stiffener or ultra cold super hair hairspray. Just get the strong stuff and always dust the hat before you stiffen. Um, don't over stiffen your hat. Don't stiffen up here, everywhere else. Just the bottom of the brim and avoid the sweat band. Sorry for repeating myself. Got to make sure people don't screw up their hats because then I feel responsible and stuff. So. You'd be surprised. A lot of people will like, you know, not hear one part of the video. 
you know, and then they just do everything wrong. You know, well, I told you in the video, don't do that. And like, uh, I didn't hear that part. So that's why I repeat myself a lot. Do it yourself stuff. People can mess their hats up. Um, you're not going to get much results unless you've got some stiffener in your hat. Uh, flat is one of the hardest shapes to do, actually, because it's got to be real stiff. So, um, you know, you could go for something else. You could go for a flat with like a kind of an outback thing like that. That's way easier to do. What I do is I steam the side, I put it on top of the tabletop, the edge, and then I bring the back up so that the front is going down, you know? That way it's not like your fingers bring it down all uneven. It's a straight edge, it's a table that's doing it so it's flat, you know? Put this steam on top of the table and bend the back up. And when you bring it back, the front goes down. That's how you do that kind of outback thing in the front. Or if you've got a western, you're doing like, you know, an extreme thing down in front. Usually you do it with your hands. I like doing it with the edge of the table. It just makes it flatter. It's like a straight edge, you know, all you artists know that using a straight edge will get you a better line than just freehanding it, you know? I don't know why I'm so obsessed with those particular chords lately. I've been playing them for a few months now.
that cat, cat with the hat, cat from JJ, that sounds right.